All right. Now discussing uh, wider regional trends with respect to terrorism. We know what's been happening in Paris, but of course there have been some decisions that will affect the the matrix here in Kenya and in East Africa. The Somali Parliament voting almost to a man to have the KDF contingent of Amisom troops withdraw from southern Somalia. Of course, that's a sector that uh, KDF troops are in and come back across the border. This being perhaps one of the most brazen and open defiances of of uh, the KDF's role in uh, Somalia coming just days after that journalist for justice report talking about the charcoal and sugar trade that was called of course black and white and in studio to discuss this with us is the executive director of the social and economic research foundation Delano Kielu thank you very much for joining us this evening Delano let's start with a decision how would this happen if it were to happen if, does uh, the Somali parliament have the mandate to order us out, to order our troops out? Uh, yes, small correction on mm. serfs. It's yeah. a partner organization. However, I'm a director of Forts and Shields, mm -hmm. which does work with serfs <laughs> in terms of these kind of things. The Somali government does have the right and the mandate as a sovereign state to determine who has operational permission within its borders. So as policymakers, the Somali parliament can sit and make that decision. Of course, we would expect the executive to overturn any decision or make a judgment call on that. However, in the case of Somalia, we can see an overwhelming response from the legislators to simply say, we are going in this direction. And it's very hard to sway opinion once it's that, uh, you know, yeah. moved in one direction. Now, d the withdrawal of the, the, the Kenyan contingent of troops in Amisom uh, from southern Somalia specifically leaves an exposed Jubaland and many, many sw a large part of southern Somalia ripe for reoccupation by Al-Shabaab. What could the immediate effect be of a withdrawal if this were to happen? If we look historically, uh, John Allen, at all the different instances and incidents where we've had massive troop withdrawals, especially where a particular contingent plays such a key role like KDF, we would notice immediately that troop withdrawals are never instantaneous. They're always phased out over time. And the main reason is because, especially when it's a military action, mm -hmm. you cannot afford to leave a vacuum. In absence of military troops, especially when there's been an on-the-ground situation like that, what we have exactly in the southern part of, in the various sectors, especially uh, going into the sectors around Kismayu, the ports below Mogadishu, it means automatically that vacuum will be filled. Mm -hmm. It's not a question of if it will be filled. It will be filled. Can the Raskamboni Brigade fill that, uh, fill that vacuum? Can the Jubaland government, um, supported by perhaps other troops from Amazon, fill that, that vacuum? Absolutely not. And Amazon has done a sterling job. Unfortunately, the strongest component in terms of number of troops on the ground has been the KDF. Mm -hmm. And in this particular case, we don't see that changing. We see really uh, a situation where countries that are really strong in terms of troop support, countries as far flung as Sierra Leone, Burundi, etc., not being able to take up that gap. The current government's existing are not even able to recruit mm -hmm. the levels of skill and resources required to maintain peace and order. So it actually destabilizes the region. All right, are we going back to a, a pre-2007 period in Somalia with Al-Shabaab gaining ascendancy there, considering that not only um, would, if, if this were to happen, KDF withdraw, Burundi, Burundi's troops seem to be all, all but you know, distracted by what's going on in their own countries and therefore might not be a, a, a very strong contributing <coughs> force in Amazon. Are we seeing um, the return or the resurgence of the Al-Shabaab by this decision? Can the Somali national uh, government s then stand in the gap if, if indeed it is, uh, it, it's, it's calling for our troops to be withdrawn? What we're going to see really here is a very rapid escalation. Mm -hmm. It's not going to take uh, months, it's going to take weeks. We do have uh, UPDF, Ugandan uh, Armed Forces as well, as part of that contingent. We do not see the capability for all the countries that put together AMISOM to come up with a replacement for KDF in the near term. If you look at the statement that the Somali parliamentarians have said, is they're saying, look, here, uh, you know, Kenyans go away. And as you Kenyans go away, we are asking other countries, come and contribute your troops. Mm -hmm. Now, being a soldier or being a military officer or police person, you're put into the line of fire. 
you're contributing your life directly and service to your nation and people who cannot fend for themselves. Mm -hmm. It's not very easy. It's not a very easy decision to make. In fact, we really laud currently the commander in chief of the defense forces for Kenya for standing behind the troops because that's what they need. Any mm -hmm. troop that is out there needs to be supported. Now, the Somali government is making a decision which is saying we don't need you Kenyans for whatever reason. We're mm -hmm. not going to talk about that. But we are asking other countries to pour in their troops. But Delano, we do need to talk about this because the, the allegations of human rights abuses have been, have been coming since Kenya crossed into Somalia in 2011. Um, there's been a monitoring group, uh, uh, the UN monitoring group made the same allegations about the charcoal trade specifically. Perhaps even <clears throat> underestimating the figures if you, are, if you are to compare them with this latest report, we've seen um, also allegations of, of uh, strikes, Air Force strikes on, on uh, livestock and and other and, and other civilian um, uh, targets is this is it time then to talk about the KDF's role in in, uh, in Somalia and perhaps give an honest assessment of what has been happening I mean given the fact that already we are discussing what could be a pullout right now I think uh, John Allen the correct way and let's have that discussion is to look at this from an angle where yes we have made good advances and you know the region has stabilized Somalia has had an opportunity to grow yeah. to get support if you look at the initiatives by Amisom some of them are educational healthcare the traditional things that any citizen of any country around the world would require within that action it's a military action of course there may be incidences or accidents there may be things like that it's about operational efficiency how efficient can the troops become as they are out there but, but wouldn't, wouldn't corruption attack that same notion of operational efficiency if um, the kdf is involved in a charcoal trade a sugar trade that is taxed by the al-shabaab as well as uh, the, the jubaland government which in essence is putting money and capability into the hands of the al-shabaab isn't that something that we should address with seriousness I think if we go into the history of the charcoal trade and the sugar trade, uh, it's not a new incident. If you go historically, this is something that you know we've looked into for quite a number of years. And it was there prior to even KDF going into Somalia. In fact, if you actually look at actions taken by, for example, the United States of America, it never embargoed Somalia. All it said was that it banned the trade of charcoal and it banned individuals who are involved in the trade of charcoal prior to KDF's incursion into Somalia from operating and, and really tried to stop anybody who was using charcoal. The other yeah. question you need to ask is, what's driving the appetite for all this charcoal that's going out? What is creating the deforestation? You know, it might even be a completely different conversation that we begin to have. True. Who funds that? Where does that money come from? All right, we've, we've got uh, time for just one last question. Here we have to, of course, speak about the wider context of what's going on in Paris, the, the, the level of skill that was applied and, and it's unfortunate but we have to speak about this the level of skill that was applied in those six separate attacks speaks to planning speaks to an efficiency and speaks to a regional reach of isis should we be worried here on the continent given that of course already al shabaab is, is is involved in a supremacy battle in some regions with isis itself in somalia I think we should be extremely alert. I think we need to increase our levels of preparedness. I believe really this is the hour. We mentioned this more than three weeks ago, that there is going to be an escalation. The war on terror is a global war. It's not located in any particular continent. It could happen anywhere, any city on this planet, and based on various factors. In the case of ISIS, ISIL, uh, Daesh, whatever you want to call them, the Incidents is now, it's very easy for them to have an international or a global reach simply because they are converting people who are non-traditional militants or terrorists yeah. and they're using those assets. Now the other scary part is that they're able to fund them. Worse than that, they're using, they're doing e effectively using military precision to gear into operations. Not a single gun during yeah. the Paris incident jammed not a single gun. Mm -hmm. The belts, every single suicide vest exploded. This indicates 
that it was not just some junior technician or mechanic from a military perspective that was involved in putting this together. It's a highly efficient operation. We need to be concerned. All right. We need to be concerned. Words to end with. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. Delano Kielu, of course, analyzing the security trends here in, uh, in the region with that decision by uh, the Somali parliament to have Kenya's defense forces pull out of Somalia and, of course, in the wake of the Paris attacks. Back to you, Yvonne.